Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's Dan Pewterbaugh. I'm with Adobe. And once again, we are here at the New Work uh, Conference put on by the New York Times in Half Moon Bay, California. Um, for this interview, I am joined uh, by Allison Baum of Trinity Ventures. Um, and we're going to be talking about the future of work, Generation Z, kind of these have been the themes of the, of the conference. So Allison, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, could you talk just briefly about your background? Because I, I, I thought that the way that you got to being focused on issues around the future of work was super interesting. Yeah, I think it's always helpful to understand why uh, we decide to focus on a certain area. But I actually started my career at Goldman Sachs on mm -hmm. the trading floor in the midst of the financial crisis. And at that time, as the business was contracting, there were a lot of jobs being eliminated. Mm -hmm. And these were other traders on the floor. These are not just you know, factory workers who are being replaced by robots, which I think is kind of the vernacular commonly used around the future of work. These were right. high paying, high level, highly educated individuals who were making literally millions of dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And then they were replaced by an algorithm. So to me, the fact that those type of jobs were getting eliminated mm -hmm. just highlighted that there's going to be a massive, even more terrifying issue for people with uh, lower level jobs as well. And mm -hmm. for me, as a Harvard grad, when I decided, oh, I should probably get into technology, seeing that's what's taking these jobs, uh -huh. I started interviewing at tech companies in New York and found that nobody cared about my economics and film degree, nobody <laughs> cared about Harvard, and nobody uh -huh. cared about Goldman Sachs. They needed people with digital skills, and I didn't even know what, what those roles meant. I didn't know what a product manager was or uh -huh. what a digital marketer was. So if I was having that problem as someone you know, with a great degree, right. um, a lot of other people in the world were going to have that problem too. So that was kind of my motivating factor to get into uh, education, which is a company called General Assembly. So spent some time there building courses for professionals and companies who are trying to retrain their workforce. Mm -hmm and moved to Asia, launched their business out there, and then got into venture capital because I found that at General Assembly, we were solving a very small problem related to the future of work, mm -hmm. but it's a massive global issue. And mm -hmm. so we really need to take a portfolio approach and say, let's find a lot of different solutions and bring them to markets all over the world. So that was my previous fund in venture capital, and now I joined Trinity where I'm focused on true technology uh, and investments that are changing the way that the future of work will look. Yeah, and that's a that's a really interesting. I, I'm not I'm not sure every viewer would be aware that that could that that granular of a specialty um, uh, what that would consist of. So you're really focused on technology solutions and how they're they're changing the shape of work. Mm -hmm. What does that kind of reshaping look like to you? I think there's two different approaches to the changing nature of work. There's a reactionary approach and there's a creative approach. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the conversation now is how do we react to what's happening? Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to do by making venture investments in technology is saying, how can we actually be part of creating that future mm -hmm. and naming it and imagining it and then building for it? Mm -hmm. So to me, there are kind of four core areas that are going to be the building blocks of what work looks like in the future. Mm -hmm. There's automation services, machine learning, and AI. Right. Um, there's human capital management. So how do you manage your own career, and how do you as a company manage your humans and mm -hmm. what they're doing? Mm -hmm. The third is infrastructure. So whether it's physical or cloud infrastructure, where is business actually being done, and mm -hmm. in what way? Mm -hmm. And then fourth is security and identity management. Mm -hmm. As people have more jobs, they change their the nature of their work faster, and you know. Um, exponential amounts of data is created, how do you kind of keep that safe in a world where things are changing so quickly? Things are changing so quickly. Yeah, I really like the, the characterization that you had. I, I think very often people sort of focus on how things are currently and how much they're going to change and to what extent they might want to resist or not resist that rather than being creative and saying, well, where are we going to end up? and how am I going to solve for that, which I think is a much more sort of positive undertaking. Um, I know that, that you've, uh, you've written about the flipped workplace, uh, which I think is a really cool concept. It, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I think one of my challenges around the conversations that are currently occurring in the future of work is they're very 
um, pie in the sky, sort of everyone knows that automation is a thing. Everyone knows there's a lot of gig workers. I mean, it's a very generalist conversation. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to do is take a very specific approach and say, this is what it will look like. Let's build for that. Mm -hmm. And so this concept of the flipped workplace is a call to business leaders to say, stop toying around with flexible work or remote work or you know making everyone come into your office big companies like yahoo have famously you know had a flexible working environment and then reversed it to all of this controversy instead kind of get ahead of that and say we are a flipped workplace mm -hmm. meaning you have your business goals as an individual employee mm -hmm. your individual work you can do whenever however wherever you like Right. So on your own time, your own schedule. The office is specifically reserved for creative, collaborative work where you're meeting other people, coming up with new ideas, open to new collisions. So there's a lot of requirements around how do you implement something like that. It has to, do, it has to be done uniformly. Um, you have to change the nature of the physical space of the office. Mm -hmm. You need to create accountability for how you're measuring people's productivity mm -hmm. and make sure that they're on board with that. Sure. Um, so there's a lot of cultural changes that are necessary, but we need to kind of put a name to it and then build toward that. And I think that kind of environment actually works really well for you know, the increasing need for diversity. People have different constraints. People have different ways of thinking. And so it's only in this kind of environment that you can actually leverage that diversity as opposed to trying to fit everyone into a box. I think that's really fascinating. And I think one of the, the things that would really kind of support that sort of view of things is because so many people have moved to open workspaces, um, uh, when, you all, when one is in the office, you know, there's sort of two modes that I often see, which is either, either people are being highly interactive or they are trying to avoid being highly interactive because right. they're trying to get something done. So it's, it's, it's sort of headphones or not. Um, it, it seems to be the, the sort of switch. Right. Yeah, yeah. But that creates a certain kind of energy in the office, right? When you have people that are there that don't want to be bothered, mm -hmm. that inherently limits the openness for interaction and creativity. And so by actually reversing that and saying, if you want to put your headphones on, go just go do your work somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, only come in if you want to talk to people or meet with people. I think that makes a big difference. I think that's really interesting, and, I, and, and I, I really do agree with you. Very often, people sort of get into a lot of sort of glittering generalities. So sort of picking a, picking a target um, and, and sort of setting that up, I think, is, is really interesting. Yeah, so I'm challenging my companies, my investments, and kind of everyone to say, you know, have CEOs and business leaders step up and say, we're flipping our workplace, mm -hmm. and this is exactly what that means. Yeah, yeah. We need to see more of that. Um, and then uh, before we got going here, because I love this, and so I have to <laughs> ask you about it, you were talking about a metaphor for how the, how the workplace is changing and, um, uh, and a way that you found to sort of think about it that, that I think is both, um, both accurate and highly accessible. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a big Game of Thrones fan, uh -huh. and I'm really excited for the next season to come back in April. We all are. <laughs> and I was thinking about why I found it such a meaningful show. And I think it's a great metaphor for the conversation happening globally right now around the future of work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the show, you have a lot of warring factions. You have all of the kingdoms who are fighting for what is generally limited resources. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing a similar conversation here in the US, for example. You know, what kind of jobs are OK to keep in the US, what's mm -hmm. going to happen to manufacturing, kind of all these, these, these ground level um, disagreements. Sure. But I think the issue related to work is much more dire and much scarier than people think uh, with automation and AI very quickly transforming all of the conversations in the reality of the day to day um, workplace. And so I actually believe automation is the White Walkers. Mm -hmm. um, so the White Walkers are coming. Everyone thinks winter is coming, but it's way worse than we could all imagine. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think, I think of myself and a lot of other people in this sector as trying to ring the warning bells, but a lot of people are resisting it and kind of putting on their headphones, <laughs> uh, you know, so to say, and, and trying to ignore the issue. But it's going to be a lot more serious than we anticipate. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that that's accurate. You know, my 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 original training was as an attorney, and and I think that 
I, I, I always used to joke that there's nothing that's all that terribly difficult about a lot of legal work, and, I, and I'm you know, quite sure that AI is about to prove me right. Um, but I do think that it's, it's pretty fascinating that people are aware of AI, they, they get that it's coming, but uh, it, it is you know, very much like the White Walkers on the other side of the wall. It's, it's vague, it's distant. It's they they don't quite yet get how, uh, how dramatic and how, how close the, 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 the challenge is, I guess. Well, and this is getting a little bit more fringe with the with the analogy, but um, you know we're having a lot of conversations about the state of quantum computing and how it can accelerate what AI can accomplish. Right. And I think of the dragons, just like quantum computing, that they are this incredible superpower right. that could be used for either good or evil. And I think that's going to make this a, a much more urgent issue a lot quicker than we than we all think. Yeah, I tend to agree, um, and uh, and it, it, it's fascinating to see where where it's where it's all going to go because I think it's all going to go there, quite soon, a, yeah. lot, a lot sooner <laughs> than anyone uh, expects. Yeah. Well, Allison, thank you so much for for joining us uh, this morning uh, on a, on a foggy uh, northern mm -hmm. northern Cal California morning. Uh, uh, please stay tuned for further conversations during the uh, the New Work Conference here. And uh, follow us at uh, on the think tank at hashtag Adobe TT. Thanks so much.